Hey, what's going on everybody on YouTube? Steve here, Rake and Profit, rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you guys with another video. And one of the most common beginner questions that I get on my channel, and matter of fact, I was just looking at my comment section, which is typically what I do before I make a video. I try to answer questions you guys are asking. And one of the most common questions I get, like literally like every single day is, Steve, how do I price my items on eBay? I had just gotten a question, I don't know who it was from, but they were uh, saying that they had picked up a bunch of PC games, a bunch of computer games, and they were trying to figure out the best way to, um, to price their items. So I wanna teach you guys a technique that, again, a lot of the intermediates and advanced sellers, they're gonna know this. So if, you're, if you've been in the game for a while, there's no need to watch this, it's definitely a beginner video. But the number one uh, strategy that I use and the number one way that I determine how to price an item is based on comparable sales. It's the same thing that a lot of real estate agents do when they price houses. They, like for example, say an agent is selling a house that, you know, maybe it's a two bedroom, uh, one bath, 1200 square foot, um, you know, it's in a, in a good neighborhood near a school and everything, they're gonna find houses that fit that criteria that have sold in the past and that's how they're gonna price the house that's one method there's a couple different methods but that's the most common method and when it comes to eBay it's the same thing if you're trying to determine how much a PC game should be listed for on eBay or how much you should list a you know a guess uh, v-neck t-shirt what you're gonna want to do is go through the sold listings on eBay and find items that have sold that are comparable so for example if I was to sell this uh, t-shirt that's on me right now guess I would try to find the exact one that would that that had sold. So what I would do is I would type in the name, I would type in the style, V-neck, I would type in the size, I would type in the color, the pattern, different things like that. And I would search the sold listings looking for, well, trying to find the exact one and multiple ones that have sold to come up with a comparable sales price and or I would find similar ones if I can't find the exact one. So at least I know it's kind of like a gauge of what I think it you know, could sell for. So it doesn't matter if you're selling clothing, electronics, video games, um, you know, home stuff, kitchen appliances. Go into eBay sold listings and you could do this through the app. You can do this through uh, the desktop version. It doesn't matter. You can go through and on the left hand side, on the sidebar, there's actually a button that says sold listings. Just hit that and look through. Obviously, you're gonna have to put in the right keywords to try to find the comparable items based on the title, model number, all the different uh, specifications and whatnot. But go through and use data, use the analytics, use the exact numbers and the information giving to determine what to price your item at. That's really it. A lot of people always ask, what should I sell this for? What should I sell that for? Go into the sold listings and look. Now, there are gonna be times uh, when you just can't find the item, maybe like an antique or something old, something rare, something, you know, maybe it's only sold once every couple of years. In that scenario, you may wanna use a service like worthpoint.com. And I actually had the privilege of meeting the CEO when I was in Las Vegas. And this company has been around for a long time and it's a humongous database of information um, that's stored. So at times you'll, you know, something will sell on eBay, but it might be so far back that eBay actually clears out that information and you can't find any information on it. So check out WorthPoint. Uh, Mark in the comments is saying WorthPoint, I use it and it's great. So WorthPoint's a, uh, a good tool that you can use as well. Uh, but most of the time when I'm pricing my items, I'm just going into the sold listings right directly on eBay and I'm looking for a similar one. If it's used, make sure you're looking at used ones. If it's new, make sure you're looking at new ones. If it's a button front, make sure you're typing in button front. Make sure you're uh, typing in you know plaids and checks if you're selling a button front you know checkered shirt um, if it's got the Brooks Brothers logo on it you're, you're selling a Brooks Brothers um, shirt make sure the comparable sales are the ones with the logo on it so um, the closer you can get to finding the exact one uh, or the exact one that's the best way to price the items and, and additionally if you only find one item that's sold like the exact one that's, that's some pretty good information there, but if you could find five or six or 10 or 15 of that exact item that's sold, that's the best way to gauge the 
the value. So, um, 109 people watching live right now. We're gonna keep this video pretty short. Smash that like button, guys. I'm gonna answer a, answer a couple of questions right now. Uh, somebody was asking about should I sell internationally on eBay? I would, I use the global shipping program. Carl's asking how long do you keep your inventory um, within your inventory in your store before you get rid of it? Um, you know, I don't really have an exact number. You know, if I had, yeah, Jason T. Smith introduced me to the uh, the CEO, so I appreciate that. What's up, Jason? Um, what was I saying? I completely forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, how long do I keep my inventory, um, my products in my inventory? You know, I'll usually just keep it in for, you know, pretty much as long as it takes if there's enough profit there. Like for example, some like suits might take eight months, they might take nine months, but if I pay five and I know I could sell it eventually for 80 or 90 or even 40 or 50, I'll just keep it in there. I'll, you know, I'll run sales. Um, you know, if I've got it priced at, like for example, I have a Harley Davidson jacket that's in my been in my inventory for about a month. Priced it super high at 400. Wasn't getting a lot of views, wasn't getting a lot of watchers, so I knocked it down to 350. I ran a sale on it. Um, I did notice that a watcher had jumped on that, so I'm starting to get closer to my sweet spot. Um, but a lot of times I'll run sales and I might slowly move the price down. But if you do your research before purchasing it and you see in the sold listings that, okay, this Tiki mug had sold and you know who I'm talking about now. What's up, Jason? Um, you know, if you saw that it sold in the past once or twice, it's probably going to sell again. Um, you just might have to wait for that right buyer to come along. You know, certain items aren't, you know, going to be as popular as, you know, iPod, uh, iPads and, you know, Sony and all that stuff. So you are welcome, Carl. Do you recommend having a store if you only have 50 listings? Um, I think the lowest price for a store is, someone correct me, is it $19.99 or something around there? I'm not 100% sure, someone help me out. Um, but for let's just say 20 bucks a month, it might be worth it with 50 listings just to run the sales. But in general, I'd probably say no. I'd say once you get maybe like over 100, get a store. It just depends on how much money you're making and you know your goals. If you're planning on scaling, like you know Christopher Lenning, who you know he's over you know what two or three thousand in his inventory now within like a couple months, and he's you know he's shooting for ten thousand listings. He had the goal. He knew what he was after. So just get the store and get it ready, um, because you're.